robotics. When people hear the term robotics, they begin to think about machines made of metal or steel. Now, normally, the first image that comes to mind would be the Terminator or Ultron. If you're not into movies, though, you're probably thinking about this, this, or a high school student's best friend, the coffee machine. These machines used in industry to reduce manual labor. They're created to perform a certain task repeatedly, but with minimal error. And because of this, people are beginning to lose their jobs. Machines start to replace them. Forbes said that over 2% of Americans, and that's 7 million people, lost their jobs in mass layoffs between 2004 and 2009. And then came BBC News, who analyzed the jobs of 20 million people and saw that 7.4% of these were at high risk of being replaced. And with the pandemic, automation speeding up. CNN said that 85 million jobs are on the line. As AI keeps developing, people are going to fear machines more and more. But why? Why do we fear these machines? I just showed you some stats on how machines are taken over many of our jobs, but is that the only cause for our fear? Well, not really. And I want to dwell deeper into the psychological aspect of this fear before moving on to my main point. The fear of robots have actually taken over the world. It has a name. It's called robophobia. And yeah, that's a real condition defined by psychologist Dr. Graham Davy as an anxiety disorder in which sufferers have an irrational fear of robots. Even some of the greatest intellectuals and technology enthusiasts of our time, like Elon Musk or the late Stephen Hawking, believed that robots and machines would inevitably lead to our doom. So why shouldn't we be afraid, right? See, but it's this fear of robots that makes it hard for us to create that world scientists desire to build. A world where humans and machines can coexist and learn from each other. To be fair, though, it's pretty obvious why machines and robots can be considered scary. I mean, look at them, right? <laughs> the reason I'm going back to this idea of Terminator and Ultron is because we're familiar with these extremely popular movies that we watched growing up. But because we grew up watching such movies that portray robots and machines as evil and monstrous, we begin to stereotype all robots as being evil and monstrous or emotionless. And that's a large cause of many of our fears today. A lot of people just fear robots and machines because we grew up watching movies that make us fear them. Now, what's been done to solve this issue of fear, you might ask? Well, there's a robot designer. His name's David Hansen. He created an almost lifelike Albert Einstein robot that could read people's expression to act with emotion. An incredible creation, not gonna lie, but would it necessarily be good? Its intended purpose is to help us humans empathize and relate to it more. But let me ask you, do you find this almost lifelike robot just a little creepy? If its intended purpose is to help us feel more comfortable around it, why do we have the opposite effect here? There's a science behind that. The uncanny valley is a sociology term referring to the creepy feelings that one is given by depictions of objects that closely resemble actual humans. In other words, it's a massive dip that occurs in our emotional response when we encounter anything that's almost, but not quite human. It was first hypothesized in the 1970s by a Japanese roboticist named Masahiro Mori, who identified that as a robot became more and more human-like, sure, initially there'd be a positive emotional reaction that we'd see in the graph, but that only held true up to a certain point. When it was close to, but not quite human, people began to develop a sense of unease or discomfort, the creeps. And that's what causes this dip in our emotional response that you can see in the graph. The only way to get out of the valley is to make the robot exactly human and <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> now, there's another theory. The brain doesn't seem tuned to care about either biological appearance or biological motion per se, said Ice Sagan, an assistant professor of cognitive science at UC San Diego. What it seems to be doing is looking for its expectations to be met for appearance and motion to be congruent. See, but that's the problem. Robots and machines cause the uncanny valley effect because their motion and appearance aren't congruent. They don't happen perfectly together and that isn't what we expect, causing us to get creeped out. Now, the reason why I just spent some time talking about our fear of 
robots and machines is because I learned of a branch of robotics that in my opinion could lower the impact of the uncanny valley effect, maybe to the point where it could even be avoided. If you noticed all the machines that we've been talking about so far, they've been made of metals like aluminum or steel. They're strong, rigid, sharp, difficult to damage unless you somehow manage to drop them from uh, the roof of any building. <laughs> and because these robots are made of such material, it makes it harder for us humans to interact with them. But let me ask you, what if robots weren't made of metal? What if robots were made of soft material, similar to that of us humans, with muscle tissues, organs, things that make it more analogous to us? And what if you could create these almost lifelike robots and avoid the uncanny valley effect? And that's where soft robotics comes in. Soft robotics is defined as the subfield in robotics dealing with creating robots from highly compliant materials, similar to those found in living organisms. They draw heavily from the way living organisms move and adapt to their surroundings. And they make these robots using materials like latex, paper, silicone, fiber, completely different from the metals and plastics that we used before. And the reason they make the robots with this material is because it makes the robot more flexible when moving and literally more soft, <laughs> allowing us humans to interact with them a lot more easily. And just to give you an example of how easy to interact with they are, here's what Iowa State University did. They created a soft robotic tentacle that could wrap around and hold an ant. Yeah, an ant without hurting it. I'd say that makes it pretty easy to interact with. And the uncanny valley isn't a problem when it comes to soft robotics because these machines aren't intended to look like humans. Rather, they're just made of material that is similar to that of us. In other words, they don't have any faces like us, but they do have, they're made of stuff that feels like our own soft skin. And this is because they could perform specialized tasks that the average robot today can't. Here's a closer look at a soft robot. And I've put it beside a regular machine so we can compare and contrast. They don't have sharp edges. They aren't stationary or rigid like the robots we're used to. And because of this, they're starting to be used in many industries, especially in the medical field, where soft robotic arms are being put to use to help in processes like surgery, where they're working alongside doctors. For example, soft robotic arms like the Festo Bionic Soft Arm. Festo, a German automation company, has created a soft robotic arm that's able to pick up and handle a wide variety of objects of different sizes and shapes. And at the same time, the technology is completely compliant and poses no danger to the user in any event of a collision. At the same time, the length of the arm can also be varied to provide maximum flexibility when it's working so that it can move around and fit even in the tightest of spaces, allowing for direct human-robot collaboration to be possible. And the flexibility of these technologies also being used in other cases in the medical industry. For example, the University of Hong Kong is using their capabilities in the medical industry to treat stroke patients who suffer from spasticity or, or stiffness in the hands. And they've created this, this glove that's using gases and fluids in a tube to help analyze a patient's hand movements when told to clench their fist. If they're not able to fully close into a fist, the soft robotic glove actually provides the extra force needed to help them. And the beauty of it is it does this without actually hurting them. Yet another perfect example of how humans and machines are already beginning to coexist through soft robotics. And soft robotics is also being used to help advance research and studies about the unknown. For example, here's a soft robotic jellyfish that can ride ocean currents and squeeze harmlessly into tight spaces which would soon give scientists a better tool for analyzing coral reefs and tracking their responses to waters that are warming as a result of climate change. To sum up, soft robotics is technology that's flexible and soft, and they use their flexibility to help with a wide variety of specialized tasks that the average robot today can't, especially when it comes to help in the medical field. And this concept of robots that don't look like us, but are similar in movement, while still having the abilities of a normal robot and more will help us lower, will help us avoid or at least lower, at least lower the impact of the uncanny valley effect, 
allowing us to finally create that world scientists desire to build. And we can make that world a reality through the use of soft robots like the Festa Bionic soft arm or the University of Hong Kong soft robotic glove. We'll be able to help improve accuracy and safety when carrying out critical medical procedures like surgery, for example. And what better establishes that humans and machines can coexist and interact with each other than having to trust each other during as critical a process as surgery, right? Before I move on to ending my talk, I just wanted to say that TEDx is meant to be a platform through which we can share our ideas. Well, this is an idea. And I do believe that in the future, soft robotics will be the way we finally end up coexisting with machines. So yalla, let's move towards a future where humans and machines can coexist and interact with each other, learn from each other, and create with each other. Thank you.